I think the whole case the other side is putting really comes down to an emotional case rather than a rational one. In today's debate, we on the affirmative side are going to defend two main contentions. First, that if God does not exist, then the universe has no purpose. And secondly, if God does exist, then the universe does have a purpose. Let me say a word in defense of each of those contentions. First, if God does not exist, then both man and the universe are inevitably doomed to death. Man, like all biological organisms, must die. And the universe, too, faces a death of its own. Astronomers tell us that the universe is expanding, and as it does so, it grows colder and colder as its energy is used up. Eventually, all the stars will burn out, and all matter will collapse into dead stars and black holes. There will be no light. There will be no heat. There will be no life. Just the corpses of dead stars and galaxies ever expanding into the endless darkness and the cold recesses of space, a universe in ruins. This is not science fiction. As unimaginable as it may sound, barring divine intervention, this will happen. But if atheism fails to provide a purpose for life and the universe, what about biblical theism? According to the biblical worldview, God does exist and man's life does not end at the grave. And because of this, we can live consistently and purposefully within the framework of such a worldview. And thus, biblical theism succeeds precisely where atheism breaks down. Now, I'd be the first to say that none of this proves that God exists. I'd be the first to say that none of this proves that God exists. 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 William Lane Craig seemed to think that it would be so intolerable, so disagreeable, that uh, we are doomed to death, that the universe is doomed to death. Somehow, playing on the heartstrings, playing on the emotions, it's not nice to think that we're all going to die. It's not nice to think that the universe is going to die a heat death and uh, that everything is going to come to an end. It's not nice to think that everything is meaningless. None of this proves that God exists. And therefore, somehow, we, that must prove that there is purpose in the universe, that there is some sort of top-down supervising God. I'd be the first to say that none of this proves that God exists. It all depends. I think the whole case the other side is putting really comes down to an emotional case rather than a rational one. An emotional case rather than a rational one. Time doesn't permit me to develop in my opening statement a, ca a case for theism. Let me simply list the arguments which I have defended in my published work. Number one, God is the best explanation for why anything exists, rather than nothing. The whole case. Two, God is the best explanation for the beginning of the universe. The whole case. Three, God is the best explanation for the fine-tuning of the initial conditions of the universe for intelligent life. The whole case the other side is putting. Four, God is the best explanation for the existence of objective moral values and duties in the world, including evil. What arguments did Professor Ridley give to show that God does not exist? The problem of evil. Evil is a departure from the way things ought to be. If there is a way things ought to be, then there must be some transcendent design plan or purpose. Hence, evil is actually evidence that God does exist. The whole case. Five, the very possibility of God's existence entails that God exists. The whole case the other side is putting. If you're interested in a detailed discussion of these arguments, Time is out. I'm sorry. see my book, Reasonable Faith. The whole case the other side is putting really comes down to an emotional case rather than a rational one. David Wolpe's argument from the comprehensibility of the universe. Number eight, the argument from the law-like structure of the universe. Number nine, Doug Guyvett's argument from the nature of existential choice. And finally, number ten, the very nature of, the hum of human beings is capable of asking questions of, uh, of purpose. No, 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 I can't. An emotional case rather than a rational one. While we can agree that if God does not exist, life has no purpose, we've not heard any good or compelling evidence for the antecedent of that conditional, that God does not exist. By contrast, I think we've heard uh, ten arguments that I list uh, for the existence of God. Richard Dawkins, please. It's not nice to think that we're all going to die. It's not nice to think 
that the universe is going to die a heat death and uh, that everything is going to come to an end. It's not nice to think that everything is meaningless. And therefore, somehow we, that must prove, 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 that must prove that there is purpose in the universe. Oh. Now, I'd be the first to say that the obvious proves that God exists. Now, Mr. Craig, I'm convinced that people adopt atheism, at least tonight, primarily for emotional rather than rational purposes. It's not your fault but mine, and it was your heart on the line. I really fucked it up this time, didn't I, my dear? Didn't I, my dear? Richard Dawkins uh, has accused us of making an emotional argument. But I believe that his presentation is especially emotional. He has not argued that God does not exist. Thank you. He has not shown that any of the arguments we, pre we presented here today are fallacious. Rather, he has simply dismissed the idea of God as pathetic. Time out. I'm sorry. That's emotional. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much.